What's going on, everybody? Will Hamilton here, and we're going to look at the French Open final between Novak Djokovic, Rafael Nadal, historic match, Rafa going for his seventh uh, French Open title, and Djokovic would be the uh, first guy since Rod Laver to have all the Grand Slams uh, sort of under his belt uh, at one time. So a lot on the line for this match. You can expect both these guys to come uh, ready to play. I think it's going to be a great match. Get to my prediction in a second, but let's talk about the... Uh, the tactics I expect to see uh, from this match, uh, from these two guys, and what you can uh, what you can look for. So, I've diagrammed some of this in the past. I want to expand on it a little bit. Uh, the main exchange you see between these guys when they're constructing a point is the uh, that's how you work the marker is a down the line uh, backhand to backhand exchange between these two. Now remember the circle is the uh, player stick is the side they're hitting on, like a pinball machine flipper. So this is a backhand for a righty, and up here, this is a backhand for a lefty. So these guys like to go down the line, uh, back and forth. And you see this a lot against Nadal because uh, guys are trying to stay away, stay away from his lefty forehand. And in the past, Djokovic has had more success uh, with this particular exchange because he's got a better backhand than Nadal. And what would end up happening, both these guys, you know, Rafa in particular, is looking to run around um, uh, his backhand here. But what Djokovic would do is he'd wait for a, uh, a shorter ball that he could step into. Djokovic, with the better backhand, is going to get um, is going to keep Nadal further behind the baseline uh, more consistently. So Djokovic would wait for that short ball a little bit on the backhand. He would step in and he would actually rip it at Rafa's forehand, and he would hit a good enough shot, enough pace on it, angle, whatever, that Nadal hitting this running forehand isn't, uh, isn't going to be in control of the point. So it's the classic uh, go at the strength play. Uh, and Djokovic sets it up quite well by stepping in and hitting a quality backhand. And now what happens, you know, Nadal is really in a tough spot here if Djokovic hits a good shot because the ensuing shot that Nadal is going to hit is typically pretty predictable. It's going to be something cross court, maybe in this window here, right? And Djokovic is perfectly positioned to handle that. So he's going to be up in the court, probably going to get a short ball. He can either go back at Nadal's backhand. This is now a running backhand form, which is going to be uh, quite difficult. Or if Nadal's far off the court and is recovering, maybe he goes behind him to hit a winner. Regardless, Djokovic is in the driver's seat here. So when to get out of this, Nadal really has to hit a good shot, maybe into this window of the court, or a quality, quality forehand cross court that pushes Djokovic uh, back. So, in the past, Nadal tried a couple things to, uh, to sort of avoid this exchange. Instead of going, he, he uh, I believe it was um, in Italy uh, last year, he started trying to uh, moonball the, uh, you know, moon a little bit more, get some air under it, hoping Djokovic would step back. That didn't work. Uh, he also tried to hit his backhands kind of more in the middle of the court occasionally like this. Uh, and what that would do is it would allow him to hit a little bit harder, lower over the net, and it would cut off the angle over here. So even though he's going at the forehand now, Djokovic can't generate this angle and get, uh, get Nadal off the court. You know, my perspective now is uh, I think if, if Nadal starts to lose these down-the-line exchanges like he has in the past, they're certainly going to go down the line like this, but if Djokovic continues to have success with this particular tactic, I think what would actually be effective for Nadal is to take a lot of these backhands and just go cross court to Djokovic's forehand over here. Hmm, marker fail. There we go. Go over to the forehand. So, you know, typically these guys like to stay away from the other guy's forehand because it's the, uh, you know, it's the strongest shot for both players. And then the cross court exchange forehand to Nadal's backhand over here would be typically an advantage for Djokovic. But if Nadal can get enough on these backhands, hit quality shots, what, uh, what actually ends up happening is a cross-court shot here, the subsequent cross-court, somewhere in this vicinity of the court, is going to allow Nadal to hit a forehand most likely. Because if it comes back on the backhand side, Nadal's very good at running around these. Obviously, anything in here... He just has to step, you know, the ball is right to his forehand. So if he can hit a quality shot over here, 
he really forces Djokovic to hit a quality forehand down the line to um, to force Nadal to you know to run over. And if, if Djokovic can pull this off, then obviously he's he's um, he's going to keep this rally neutral. But if he goes cross court with the backhand here, ball comes back on the forehand, then Nadal can take that subsequent forehand either at Djokovic's backhand like that, or he can rip it back cross court again with the forehand. Let's, uh, let's get rid of some of this stuff and, and diagram that. He can bring the forehand back cross court, and this could very much wrong foot Djokovic, who, if he's pulled over here for the backhand, hits a cross court, he's going to expect most likely something back over here. So as he's recovering, Nadal could go back, uh, back over there. And this is actually one of um, Nadal's favorite plays. When the ball's on the backhand, he runs around to hit a forehand, exposing a ton of court over here. We'll still, you know, we'll rip it cross court, hit a high, high quality enough ball where he can leave some of this exposed and the middle of the court is now controlled on his forehand. So I think setting up this, uh, this particular exchange of your Nadal would be a, would be a successful uh, tactic there. Um, again, if, uh, if he can pull off the high quality backhand that kind of shrinks the court that, that Djokovic can work with. If he doesn't hit a good backhand, then Djokovic can be able to go down the line uh, quite frequently. Um, or just hit a quality, quality forehand cross court, which will force, uh, which will force a backhand. So it's a little bit more of a, a high risk play there, um, but uh, but I think again, if the down the line backhand exchange uh, isn't working out for Nadal, that would be the uh, the first adjustment I would look for. And uh, you know, one of the problems here is if he gets if he gets Djokovic off the court, gets a forehand, and then brings that the subsequent forehand back down the line, he is forcing Djokovic to hit a backhand on the run. Djokovic probably has the best running backhand on tour. Um, he hit a couple against Federer the other day that were just great. You know, he slides into it and can really stick it, uh, stick it cross court. So, uh, so you know, that's uh, I guess that's just tough. He's playing a guy who obviously is is quite adept at that. But um, but anyway, that is the main thing. Uh, main thing I would look for um, keys for Djokovic uh, return well. That's obviously huge, and he's done a lot of damage against uh, Nadal in the past with that kind of hard return down the middle that pushes Nadal back. Uh, you know, when he lands, when Nadal lands from his serve, he's going to be somewhere here. And if you just kind of hit the ball hard right back at him and it lands somewhere here, he's going to retreat and kind of dig that ball off of his shoelaces. Uh, it's not going to be a quality shot. And Djokovic can st step up and take control of the point there. So uh, those are my, you know, my general thoughts on the, uh, actually one other interesting uh, sort of observation about, about Nadal that I want to share with you. Um, I was recently, as many of you know, at the French Open and got to sit right behind uh, the court to watch Rafa. And we've seen him practice at Indian Wells hard court, and he's maybe getting this much net clearance on his forehand. He's very much trying to rip it. But at the French, he was hitting it five to 10 feet over the net consistently, just a ton of air under that ball. So it was an interesting kind of you know, observation, the difference in trajectory Nadal uh, uh, uses depending on the surface and of course his ability to do that is, is one of the reasons he's, he's had more success, had a ton of success on grass, on hard courts, um, sort of later in his career when earlier he was more of a clay court specialist. So of course that's one, that adjustment is one of the reasons he's the, uh, one of the best players of all time. So I wanted to share that, thought it was cool. Uh, predictions for the match. Uh, I said in an email um, a couple weeks ago I thought Nadal was going to win in five sets. Uh, over Djokovic, um, and I'm going to stick with that prediction. Uh, I think it'll be a real tight one. Uh, I think it'll be a great match. Really looking forward to it. Expect a lot of long rallies, and um, and I expect to see uh, these these tactics play out. So please uh, please let me know what you think about this video in the good old comments below. What's your prediction? How many sets, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and any other observations you might have? Keys to the match, tactics, whatever. Would love to hear them. Love or at least read them. Uh, but uh, with that in mind, I'm going to sign off. Uh, match starts in you know, a little over 12 hours, something like that. So uh, yeah, looking forward to it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.